Hello everybody and welcome to Parks Bros. It's Drew here and we're back at SeaWorld San Diego to celebrate their 60th anniversary, which is today. I can't wait. And I hope you can either. So, let's go. So first thing upon entry today on the 60th anniversary of SeaWorld San Diego, there was some big changes on the horizon. I have not been here since October, so I got to see the brand new front entrance work going on. You can see they already changed over the security entrance and that's looking stellar i gotta say definitely an upgrade however they have officially torn down the wave entrance at the front of the park they're going for a new style i will say i'm almost as salty as the sea when it comes to that change however i am excited looking at the concept art a little closer as it seems like they're going to change the entirety of the entrance including all of the touch pool area as well as the theming behind it i'm very curious to see how that's all going to look and we're gonna see constant construction, it seems, for probably the rest of this year and maybe even further. With these new changes, definitely keep an eye out for the changed entryway as well as security checkpoint off to the side of the park. As you will not be entering directly in where you used to, it'll just be off to the right-hand side a bit. I will also say I'm kind of sad about the coral reef theme kind of changing. It looks by the concept art. However, a big change is sometimes really nice. So I'm very excited to see how it all ends up looking, especially with the new rock work that seems to be planned. As we head out of the front entrance of the park though, I will mention that the park exit is off to the side here behind my good buddy Dylan from Theme Park Obsession who's right in front of me. Hey buddy, how you doing? <laughs> good, how are you? Um, you know, I'm excited to see all they have for the 60th anniversary. I'm excited to see everything as well and also see the bugs for Did you see that? Did you see that? I think so. I think so. Wildlife already. It's Well, we are at SeaWorld. Yeah, yeah. I'm also excited to see the you know, changes since I've been here last because it's been a few months. Yeah, yeah. It has been a while. I think we both last visited in October, right? Yeah. Is that right for <laughs> Hollow Scream? It's, been, it's not as scary over here right now, which, yeah, is, which true. is nice. True. Yeah, usually there's like a big clown over here and <laughs> like insane. chainsaws and all that oh, yeah. stuff. But yeah, uh, this is the exit way. So we're not going to head there yet. Mm. Not quite yet. Let's yeah. check everything out, I guess. You know? yeah, let's, let's, go. let's go. As we make our way past the temporary exit, we're heading into the Ocean Explorer realm. First stop, Jewels of the Sea. A brand new exhibit specifically for jellyfish is going to be in this area fairly soon. They're currently working on this area of the realm. So I'm very excited for this as the new addition for the 60th anniversary and we'll look at some concept art in just a second yeah looking at this concept art on the construction fence right here there's a lot of opportunity for cool interactions with the jellyfish like them swimming all the way around you i'm really excited for this this is their first new exhibit in a very long time and it's very needed at this point i would say considering the freshwater aquarium and another aquarium have sadly gone the way of the waves on the other side of the Ocean Explorer realm, right next to the Pacific Coast Aquarium where there is an octopus as well as some other fish, they've got a really cool octopus themed sign that's pretty new, at least in my eyes. Really nice looking. Even though it's 66 degrees, certain people are braving Journey to Atlantis, which has officially reopened for this year. I know it was closed for winter refurbishment over the past couple of months. But they uh, seem to have repainted the bottom of the pool recently. And um, even though it's only 66 degrees, that splash is still as big as ever. My goodness. I don't know if we'll ride it today. I don't think we're brave enough, but it's good to see it open. Next to Arctic Rescue, as well as Wild Arctic and the Penguin Encounter, they have a brand new stage up for the Seven Seas Food Festival, which uh, is not running today, sadly. However, it is running on weekends through april 28th so definitely check it out if you could it's a really amazing food event and uh you can get a lot of items 
for the main ticket price. I believe it's 15 items for $85 is the top, the top dollar. Um, but yeah, it's, it's such good food. And if you're curious, they do have new theming around Arctic Rescue and the queue, which I think is cool. We can check some of that out more later on. Supposedly it's a 15 minute wait. I think it's probably a little bit longer than that, but we'll have to ride it a little later on. After we do a full lap through the park, just checking up on updates. Here's just a quick example of one of the booths over here by Arctic Rescue. And this is how much the sampler cards each cost. It ends up typically being about 575 or so for each item which will save you quite a bit of money unless you're only getting bottled waters, in which case there's water fountains all around the park. So I wouldn't bother with that. After a quick dive with turtles, we found ourselves in one of the gift shops throughout the park. They've got all this 60th anniversary merch featuring a, a maybe this is actually a retro fish. I'm not really sure. I've never seen this logo before, but this is all for the 60th, including this crazy sparkly jacket, which is kind of fun. There's nothing on the back here. Um, but yeah, they're they're going all out with like this iridescent look. Um, it's pretty cool. I like I like this tie-dye shirt a lot. This is $34.99, at least before pass holder discount. It's kind of nuts. There's tons of mugs here as well. I really like the color scheme. $24.99 for the mugs, as well as, I don't know what these are. Are these coasters? I think they're coasters. Yeah, yeah, $14.99 for those. This is all cool looking. I like it a lot. We've made our way to the waterfront, which is easily one of my favorite places in the entire park. It's so beautiful over here. And something that they've changed since we were last over here was the fact that there used to be private cabanas you could rent out right here on this little uh, terrace at the end. They no longer are here, so it's just kind of free seating. So if you wanna, if you wanna sit right on Mission Bay, you totally can. And it's such a beautiful day right now. I, I could probably sit in one of those chairs for hours. Right next to the Bayside Amphitheater where Tidal Twister used to roam. Uh, it's officially been completely demolished. Um, you can kind of barely see it through the cracks, which I won't show. <laughs> it's gone. It's completely leveled. Um, it is literally just dirt and some concrete now, which is kind of nuts because I remember literally making construction updates pretty, pretty consistently back in, what, 2017, 2018? when this ride was just about to open up. Um, it had a lot of problems, don't get me wrong, but it is nuts to see it already gone. So hopefully they refill this space within the next couple of years. Supposedly the tide pool area just next to it underneath where those covers are has also gone the way of the waves. I think that's my new saying for today. I like that. Um, yeah, kind of nuts to think about. Hopefully we get something new over in this section of the park because it'll be cool to draw more people this way. Because right now, the only ride that draws people to this section of the park is, of course, Shipwreck Rapids, which, oh my goodness, it is wrecking people right now. I gotta say, the park entrance said this ride was closed today, but it's clearly open. So I don't think we're gonna check it out because it's absolutely crazy right now with how wet people are getting. But uh, yeah, it is, it is cool to see it open. Although I wish the signs out front mentioned that. So it is only a five minute wait, but I'm gonna walk into the entry queue for Shipwreck Rapids right now, not to ride the thing. Oh my goodness, heck no. As you can hear more screams from the waves, but you have a very clear view of the entirety of construction over here. Um, so <laughs> it's just out, out in the open. They did not wall this section off, um, but you can see the freshwater aquarium that used to reside over here has been completely demolished. Um, so that is also a spot they could build something new. So the tide pools gone the way of the waves. Tidal Twister obviously gone with the exception of its exit platform because that is all like concrete and stonework. But also the fact that the aquarium is now demoed as well. There is so much room that they could build something brand new and something really eye-catching next to Shipwreck Rapids uh, yeah, wow, what a view over here.
Construction updates done. Now it's time for some thrills, starting with Manta. Let's go ride. Well, our first coaster ride of the day is going to be Manta. Opened 12 years ago now, kind of crazy to think about. But it does look like they've actually repainted sections of the track because you can no longer see some of those wheel lines on the tops and sides, especially of this piece of track right here as it's about to race by. Now let's get a ride ourselves. It's gonna be a fun one. This is my first coaster in, oh my goodness, four months. Something I wasn't the biggest fan of was the lack of shade in this queue on Manta, but they've got brand new Ray looking umbrellas throughout the queue. Hopefully they add a couple more down the line, but we're gonna hop pretty much right on and probably get a couple rides here. So let's go. After our amazing rides on Manta, we of course had to stop by Manta Pizza, um, which also may be going the way of the waves. Yes, I'm gonna make that a new slogan for stuff that goes away at this park. Uh, but you can see it's temporarily closed. There's also no longer the TV screens for orders. And it looks like the inside is pretty much all but been cleaned out uh, outside of just like your standard uh, restaurant stuff like where you know a, a sink some a high man um but yeah you, you get the gist of what i'm trying to say it's um interesting because this was literally just turned into manta pizza maybe a year and a half ago and um it's changed quite a few times so i'm curious if they'll find the right fit for what they should sell here before we check out more amazing coasters at the park uh Pretty massive construction update over here for the new entrance. The second set of roofing for the new entry plaza is going up right now. Um, kind of nuts. It's only been about two and a half hours since we last saw the front entrance. So this is going to go up really quick. We'll come back to the details on that in just a second. But first, we got to check out all of the 60th merch, which is right in front of us. At least some more stuff we didn't see before. All right, officially looking at all of the merch. I gotta say, there's some really good winners in here. All of these cool pieces of merch are actually using the original logo from 60 years ago, which is really cool. And I gotta say, some favorites for me are that baseball cap and the baseball jersey even. But do know that the cap itself is $33 and the jersey is $80. And don't forget that 5% surcharge as well. I'm pretty sure you get a pass holder discount on that. I don't know how much that will be. It depends on the pass that you own. But I gotta say, all the merch seems to be a pretty big win. I love most of it. I wish I could get a lot of it, including even this little backpack, which is really cute, really sparkly. Okay, it's time for more coasters as we walk by some active construction on the right-hand side for the jellyfish exhibit. This time, we're hitting up something a little more intense electric eel by the way i wanted to mention manta was my first coaster of this year that's how out of it i've been the past couple of months i'll probably talk about that after electric eel but let's get on this beast 150 feet in the air 
multiple inversions, and backwards and forwards launches. As we head to our next coaster, Emperor, I gotta say, um, the park is putting in little touches of theming here and there that were not there before. I mean, more plant life has spawned over here as well as more rock work, uh, as well as you can see along that fence line, a cool landscape of presumably Antarctica. So let's hop right on. It's pretty much a walk on over at Emperor right now. So yeah, more coasters on the way, right, Dylan? Yeah. Let's let's have a fun time. I mentioned a couple minutes ago that we were going to come back to the theming outside of Arctic Rescue. Well, here we are. Lots of crates for the base station. Uh, really cool. Uh, added touches. Same with Emperor. Um, I'm curious if this is just for the 60th anniversary celebration that they're adding all of this stuff in, but it looks great. Adds more of that feel and vibe that the ride should have. It's great, and uh, we're gonna wait literally like no time at all. So let's hop on. And some more crates and theming inside as well. Cool to see. So as we're buying uh, a locker, or as it turned out, multiple lockers here for Arctic Rescue, I do wanna mention that all of the lockers are $3 per hour now. That was raised, I believe, about a year or a year and a half ago to that, um, which is kind of crazy, especially when half the lockers aren't working properly, at least for us today. Like Dylan used his card multiple times and every time he went to the locker that it said to go to and used the code that he put in, it didn't work out. Um, so I used it and thankfully it worked, but it, it's just like the fact that we have to pay this much over and over again is kind of crazy, especially when we're riding multiple coasters in a day. I wish SeaWorld San Diego specifically would put in something like at the Ohio parks where you pay 10 bucks for all day and you can move your locker to whatever ride you're going to. And I think it makes it a lot better for a park guest instead of spending, I think we've spent $18 on lockers today already um, for doing four separate rides. So it's kind of kind of crazy, um, but I do hope they change that.
So we did just get an amazing back row ride on Arctic Rescue, but I do want to talk about the locker situation a little bit longer. So something that I've kind of felt for a long time about lockers when it comes to every park, let alone just SeaWorld San Diego, um, it feels like a punishment to bring a bag or a backpack. Uh, thankfully today on some rides, they've actually had the bins out, but we didn't know that. So I haven't seen the bins out in years. Um, so technically we didn't need to buy a locker for specifically Manta. However, with them having problems constantly and the fact that we do kind of get punished for bringing a bag, there's supposed to be kind of a trade-off, right? No bags equals quicker dispatch times, meaning you can get on rides quicker. However, today that hasn't been the case whatsoever. Um, for Arctic Rescue, there were certain dispatches that took four, five, six, maybe even seven minutes long. Sure, on average, they were about two minutes each, but still, there were, there were a couple dispatches where it was just in a row taking its time. So and it's a bummer because we're getting punished and actually having to physically pay money for us having bags in the park, but not getting anything really in return for that. So I think it's something all parks need to work on in the future because the whole rental locker situation is really just egregious in general, especially when you have other parks like Universal doing lockers for free. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a real bummer. Kind of, kind of puts a damper on the day typically. Now, I don't think I'd be as kind of upset about this if there was that option to just pay $10 flat for the entire day and be able to move your locker from ride to ride. However, between Dylan and I, we've spent $18 just for riding five rides um, because of the little mishap earlier with, with Dylan's lockers not opening. And um, yeah, $18 in total to ride five rides just because we have bags. It's kind of weird to say the least but to kind of lighten the mood let's check out wild arctic and see if there's any changes there before we head into wild arctic itself i did want to mention these new graphics and posters on the walls really looking cool giving you some more info about the arctic as well as polar bears and harbor seals in specific on this one also here's some info on the arctic circle which kind of ties back in to arctic rescue itself and you'll see some familiar flags that are actually next to the attraction itself outside. Uh, another thing that has started to be implemented at more SeaWorld parks is mobile order only locations, including the chicken snack shack. Um, we were thinking about maybe getting a funnel cake, but honestly, it kind of deters me uh, trying to do the mobile order thing. I wish I could just walk in and pay money because there's no line or anything and they've got people inside staffing it um but we'd have to mobile order and personally i don't want to do that so we're gonna move on with our day further we've got about an hour till park close just before leaving look at these new statues for the orca encounter i gotta say that one on the left is amazing of it jumping out of the water like that cool additions i know these fins were here prior but this is something brand new to me Here's one last look at the front entrance. It looks like uh, we're about halfway there. All we need is the big canopy over the middle as well as the sign, and it should be good to go out, outside of maybe some paint and finishing touches. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely there. Um, I'll save my full opinions till it's done. So that's officially gonna do it from the official 60th anniversary day of SeaWorld San Diego. Uh, kind of crazy to actually be here on a day like today. Sadly, we missed the opening at 10 a.m. just because it takes so long to get down to San Diego proper uh, for Dylan and I. But man, oh man, it was fun to be here. Kind of historic in a way, which is kind of cool. I did kind of want to buy some of that merch because it had the day we were specifically there. Um, but I will say, really fun to ride all the coasters, get to see all the construction updates because there's so much going on at this park right now and I'm really appreciative of a lot of it. Uh, I will say kind of a sour note at the end with the locker situation, but hopefully they can change some of those policies in the future or I'll just stop bringing a bag entirely, which is kind of a bummer, but we'll uh, have to wait and see on that one. But I hope you all enjoyed. I really do appreciate you joining Dylan and I. Make sure to subscribe to Theme Park Obsession if you have not. We're trying to get to, we're trying to get him to 100,000 subscribers. I think that would be really cool. 
but I want to say thank you all so much again for watching. And until next time, we'll see you on the next ride.